We're here at Colonnade Park in Seattle, Washington, underneath uh, I-5, basically. This park is uh, the result of the combined efforts of a lot of people that uh, just want places for kids to ride, places for people to go to ride bikes. There used to be, uh, they used to be called Tent City. There was just a bunch of tents here, people living in, in the bushes. And uh, so it was a good use of the land that way. My influence here has been to uh, help design the, the trials as part of the park. Zeb and the guys at Fluid Ride were part of a process led by Evergreen Mountain Bike Alliance that included thousands of hours of volunteer labor. The goal was to make the first all-weather mountain bike park underneath the freeway. We're focusing on sustainable construction techniques and one of the ideas we had is to use what were called gabions. They're these wire baskets that we can fill with rock. And we're starting to put some rungs across the top of these for a ladder bridge so people will be able to start at the top of the hill, ride all the way down, and then ride the trail back up. We've got a very unique area to build here. Uh, previous to us building this park, it was just covered with blackberries, lots of drug use. Uh, it was a base for homeless people who were doing a lot of car prowls. But we came together with the off-leash dog area people and other people in the neighborhood who just wanted to see this area improved. It has some great advantages in that it's covered. Right now it's raining, but it's dry underneath here. It's not just about bikes, but uh, the bike people were kind of the group that uh, got the whole idea going and got a lot of the funding. The, the original idea of Colonnade was thrown out there originally by a guy named Simon Lawton, who runs Fluid Ride. He lived right by there. And the city was going through this um, development process where they were funding 20, 25 new parks. And Eastlake needed a park, and the only good spot was underneath the freeway. Well, what the heck are you going to do with that? And so Simon was pushing the idea of a jump park or something like that. He got the ball rolling, handed it off to BBTC, and then we worked with the community over about a three or four year public process to kind of refine the idea, see one, what the community wanted, make it work with them, um, and then the next thing is figure out what mountain bikers wanted. When it's done, you will be able to ride any form of bike here. Phase two began and the builders began to build more advanced free ride features. The builders started and the volunteers came out. The new direction appealed to more riders. The product was tested and it was tested and it was discussed. There was a lot of product testing required to get the features right. What was the other stuff you worked on out here? I uh, made these bowls up here for these drops. What was the goal of the big jump line for you? Uh, it's to be as flowy and as fun as possible. Well, I told them that I did a lot of the work at SeaTac and they said they wanted it to be like the big lines there, uh, except they all had to be tabletops. So what kind of riders are going to ride your stuff? Uh, it's the expert line, basically. What kind of rider are you? Probably expert.
How's progress? It's going well, going well. It's exceeding my expectations. We've done more than, uh, than I'd planned so far. Um, we got Kim's whole line in, that was never planned. We got this terrace joyride jump park area. Wasn't supposed to be terrace like this, turned out better than we planned. So overall, going well, but we're gonna be in a crunch. What do you have to say about volunteer labor? They're awesome, they're awesome. They, it started to die down a bit when the weather got nice. So I just put out one little call for help on the on the forums and I just got, you know, flooded today. It's, it's they're just incredible. We've logged, you know, we've logged over 12,000 volunteer hours. You know, the neighborhood uh, matching fund grant from the city of Seattle is just incredible. They basically, they want us to show them that the, that the community's into it. So by volunteer hours, by materials, by cash contributions, and then they'll match it dollar for dollar. It's the old, uh, the old statement that if you build it, they will come. You build the kind of parks that people want to ride and the features that they want to ride, the volunteers come out on their own. Right. It's a real community project and everybody chipped in to make it happen. Thank you very much. But I would like to quickly mention a few key people who really stepped up. Big thanks to Art Tufty, Brian Jones, and Justin Vanderpool, who really got this project off the ground, led the first phase, and cre helped really create the limestone loop back there. Thanks, guys. Well, Tim Banning for the Tequala Trail and countless and hours of advocacy for Colonnade. All right, then quickly, Joel Lavin for the big wooden structure line of stumps, bridges, coasters, log rides, skinnies, that crazy teeter-totter back there that turns, you know, in weird directions. The Holy Shoot, G-Line, many other structures. Kim Sturtz and his crew, Brett, Andy, many others on K-Line and the huge berms on the south end of the park. Ben Lin and Tanya Wang for the awesome, awesome drainage work, the retaining walls, the berms, the landscaping work. If it weren't for you guys, this park would, would, be com would look completely different. Chuck Jones and Tanya Hurst for the waterfall line, the rock garden. Come down this, session off of that, roll in, and then it'll lead you into the whole trail system there. Scott Smith and the High Life crew for the upper two jump lines. Um, most popular lines in the park. <laughs> and Nick Friedman for helping create and shape all the jumps on those lines. Mike Wadholm and crew, Miguel, Loopy, Kevin for the pump track. Ben Gregg and the Gregg family for the tight and twisty berm trail over here. Bob Bournique for the octagon of death. And that's, that's death to derailers and components, not people. It's, it's actually a pretty safe trail. Thanks, Bob, and thanks, Bob, for all the awesome lumber and supplies. Man, okay, really quickly, Zepp Tingy, Joel Moreland, and the Trials crew for the Trials area. It feels great, man. It's nice to have a place to ride and nice to have people to uh, ride with. Pip Mason and crew for Pip's Hips on the far south end. So the colonnade's done, and um, you must feel pretty psyched about that, considering that everyone gives you credit for the original impetus of where that came from. Yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing to see it through. I mean, I really got involved, I guess, in, you know, mid to late 90s. So it's been over a decade um, to see it kind of like finally being done. And all I can say is that I could never in my wildest dreams have imagined that it would look like it does and be as great as it is. And the guys at Evergreen and everybody who came out and did all the work there, I did none of that.